Hey, this is Daniel here. And in this video, I wanted to share with you a quick, but incredibly powerful business lesson that I love that uh, has given me so much over the years. And uh, it's almost like this sort of spiritual ish business lessons was a bit different, but it's uh, uh, unusual. I don't really hear people talk about this. So I think you might find it really valuable. So in life, in business, you know, this can be applied to really anything. Uh, this can actually work wonders to help you sort of calibrate and um, find um, balance and harmony in what you're doing, which will produce the best possible results you when it's a great sort of um, tool principle to guide you to take the action next that is going to be like the most productive to um, further growing um, and reaching success in whatever it is that you're basically uh, doing. So the first thing I want to do, so this is the lesson of yin and yang, apply to, again, anything, but I'll focus on business here in this video. So I don't butcher like the uh, actual definition of yin and yang. I'm not going to read here from my phone. I'm just going to read for you first what yin and yang is if you don't know what this means, what this concept is about. And in any case, like being really clear on what that, uh, what the yin and yang means is helpful. So uh, in Chinese philosophy, uh, yin and yang are opposite forces that form a whole. Everything contains both yin and yang in a balance that is always changing. Such as hot and cold, day and night, and health and disease. And actually in traditional Chinese medicine, uh, disease is diagnosed and treated based on the balance of yin and yang. So that's really what we're going to talk about now is like how uh, we can use that to treat our business, like our business problems uh, and unlock greater growth in our business. So the best way to explain this, I think, is just to go through a few examples, like how this applies, right? So um, basically for anything, any area of your business, uh, any yeah, anything to do, I'll show you examples like what I'm talking about, but anything we can always ask ourselves this question. So are we or am I more yin or more yang in my business in this area right now? And if you're more like, let's say, the yang, you know, then you probably will benefit from being a bit more yin, right? So finding harmony in this area is probably going to be... Um, a great way to get better results, uh, have more success and unlock more, yeah, more growth and, and success. Whatever your definition of success is, obviously it can be different, but uh, you know, if things are not in harmony or they're out of balance, that's usually something that's gonna stifle your progress. It's gonna slow you down, it's gonna harm your results, right? So uh, that's why we're seeking to uh, harmonize. And that's oftentimes gonna lead you to uh, learn things and do things uh, that you, maybe aren't very good at or you know your business is weak at so of, of course that um, naturally means that this oftentimes lead to opens your eyes to areas with a lot of uh, potential opportunity to grow that have been maybe neglected or you know things that you can improve upon that would really uh, yeah create better results in your business so uh, the first example I'll give you is expansion versus refinement so something I talk about a lot with my clients uh, and a lot of people in business is is this uh, sort of uh, yin and yang uh, side of your business. So expansion versus refinement. So um, a lot of entrepreneurs are more, um, I think we all are more uh, prone to be good at one of those sides of the business, right? So we can expand the business, grow, acquire more business, create things, build, etc scale right versus refine so that's more like um, making things run better right making things perform better making products better um, making things more profitable more effective more efficient right so there's like kind of these two things that don't necessarily go together usually they don't actually so if you if you expand a lot you'll lose some of that like refinement and efficiency and things for some time right until you zone back in that and then you can make things more refined and more efficient, more profitable. Um, and then you can sort of cycle those two. So we also call it like bulking and cutting basically, but expansion versus refinement. So if you or your business or both is much more prone to expansion, that's what you spend a lot of your time on thinking about. 
you might have a big opportunity to balance things out, create more harmony by at least for some time focusing more on refinement, right? So making things more profitable and efficient and things. Same if you're like all about that, uh, let's say a bit of a perfection, perfectionist uh, and you don't really have a lot of growth and, and expansion in your business, uh, then that's probably where you should focus to grow, right? So by letting go of some of that uh, uh, perfection and efficiency and things and uh, actually allowing growth, even if it's a bit messy and things, uh, is probably the way to go if you want to grow your business. Uh, and that's probably what's been holding you back is not doing that enough, right? Or not allowing that to happen. So one example, another one, uh, I'll kind of try to run through is a bit faster as well, just to give you more examples to think about. And this can be applied to anything. There's always two sides to it, right? There's always this dualism of uh, one side and then the opposite, right? So you can apply this to anything. But another good example is uh, creativity versus logic. So uh, again, I've talked to a lot of people where uh, this certainly applies. I think it applies to every person to varying degrees, but certainly quite extreme for the people that are usually the best at either one of these things. So the two things I'm talking about here are the dualism is creativity versus logic, right? Not saying they can't go together, but people that tend to be more creative, tend to be more outside the box thinkers, they tend to not enjoy, let's say, things that are very sort of logical um, as much, right? Same goes with people that are very logical. Uh, they tend to not think as outside the box and they tend to enjoy more like the routine and the you know, the predictability of things like numbers and stuff. That's just an observation I've made. Uh, and I know a lot of people uh, experience that themselves. So like, let's say you enjoy um, coming up with ideas and, and creating things. You probably don't enjoy like accounting and uh, math and things as much, right? As someone that does enjoy that, then doesn't enjoy the uncertainty and things, uh, um, the messiness of like creativity. So that's one thing, again, if you're very logical, and you don't enjoy creativity, uh, you or the business will probably benefit from being a bit more creative, right? And vice versa. Uh, next thing, learn versus do. So um, it's important to both learn and do. So that harmony is where you're gonna be the most successful in my experience. So if you spend time learning and doing, and it's uh, you know it's in harmony, but what I see happen to people is that some people uh, will uh, spend most of their time learning and they get stuck in like information gathering mode basically and they learn and learn and learn and they don't do enough right so if you do that you're not gonna get much result in anything uh, in business but the same goes for people that are uh, great at, at doing stuff like they're doers but they don't learn enough like they don't listen maybe and pay attention enough right so they just go and their instinct is to take action and do and do and do. And then you could also get in trouble because you may be doing things uh, not very intelligently or not in the best way possible. And if you just spend some time learning and getting better at what you're doing, you know, you could get 3x, 4x, 10x the result from that same activity, like as much doing, right? So that's another thing where you certainly need the harmony because you need to learn and you need to do, you need to balance that out, right? You can't be all doing and all learning. Neither is gonna be ideal. Neither is gonna be optimal, right? Uh, fast versus slow. So uh, it's important to go fast, right? Speed is really important uh, in business to get results, but also it's important to slow down. So um, if you just go, 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 and you don't ever slow down to like, let's say take time to learn and think and observe, uh, you're probably gonna end up in trouble. Same if you just are very slow always and very careful, then uh, you're not really gonna ever get anywhere far in business because you need to be much faster, you know, um, because things will shift, things will change. So if you've got a great opportunity right now to do something and it takes you two or three years, it's probably not gonna be a great opportunity anymore. Uh, not as much at least. So again, harmony is what you need to find. Um, Rules versus freedom is another thing that I think is pretty interesting to look at because uh, both are important. So freedom is great. So I mean, just total flexibility and things uh, about how you're doing things or operating your business or whatever it may be or how your team uh, behaves. Like 
we need freedom. We need flexibility. Like we need to be able to be creative and figure things out and just feel that sense of freedom. Uh, but if it's all like that, there's probably not going to be much discipline. There's not going to be, again, an ideal amount of uh, progress being made. And it's going to be all over the place, basically. So we need some rules. We need some hard fixed rules to follow. Um, or it's going to be very messy. So um, we can call it like rules in business, like management, essentially. And freedom is kind of what creates the flow. So if you overmanage your business and overmanage the people in your business, you're going to stifle all like freedom and flow and creativity and things, right? So it's going to become actually less effective, less efficient, and it's not going to be good. Same if you don't have any management at all, it's going to be a total mess, right? So you need both. You need to find the harmony. Uh, revenue versus profit, uh, another good one to look at. So um, that one is very straightforward, very simple. So if you look at your business right now, um, do you have a lot of revenue, right? But you're not maybe super profitable. That could be a situation you're in, or you might not have much revenue, but the revenue you got is very profitable, right? So um, what to do? Like if you're clearly more the yin or the yang in this um, scenario, revenue versus profit, the way to to progress to the way to um, grow your business and be more successful is probably to, to find, go in the other direction a bit more, right? So let's say your business doesn't have much revenue, but it has great profitability. Um, yeah, that might be fine. But if you want to grow your business and make more money at the end of the day, like more profit in the bank, you probably need to grow your revenue more. That probably means also sacrificing some of the profitability. Usually you can't grow a business without sacrificing some profitability, at least for some time. Same with, um, um, you know, if your business has, has got a lot of revenue, but it's like really messy, let's say, and it's not very profitable or profitability can be improved, then, you know, uh, slowing down the top line growth, uh, revenue growth of the business and focusing more on profitability for some time is probably going to be the thing that really helps you make more money uh, and makes the business more successful um, in the near term. So that's probably what you should be shifting your focus on then. Uh, if that's the case, to to find the harmony, to balance things out. Uh, team versus alone is another thing. So do you do much, if not everything alone, like in your business, like you're doing everything? Uh, or do you work with a team and delegate, right? And then the question is like, how much do you delegate? So uh, do you delegate everything and you're not really involved? Like, do you have the tendency to outsource like as much as possible, like you don't really want to do anything in the business, um, that can actually be a problem. Uh, obviously, if you're doing everything alone, that can also be a problem. So again, it's finding that harmony where uh, you can grow and delegate and have time and things yourself, <clears throat> but you're also uh, not totally disconnected from the business, almost like avoiding the business, not wanting to do anything, uh, always taking the easier route and delegating when you could actually sit down, you know, roll up your sleeves and learn and, and participate. Uh, work hard versus easy. So that's the last one I'll, I'll, I'll share here. We can we keep going, but hopefully this is giving you a good sense of like how to run through this uh, exercise, like thinking about it, the yin and the yang, uh, and uh, like how it actually makes sense, like how it actually works and why it works, right, with these examples. So work hard versus easy. Another example. So um, it's definitely important to work hard, but it's also important not to to work too hard all the time, you know? So um, you need to have some space to think, basically, right? So um, so if you're always working super hard, you know, you're probably not gonna have space to do that. You're gonna start making worse decisions. You're gonna start to get kind of like this blurry, cloudy vision and your results will suffer. Same if you're always taking like the easy route and you're lazy and you're not willing to put in the hard hours and work on your business. You know, obviously, I don't really have to explain. You're not going to obviously get the best results you could. So, hope this makes sense. I hope this is insightful. Um, one more thing I'll share with you here on actually back to team versus alone, which I, th I think is a good quote to kind of um, demonstrate yin and yang. So, there's an African proverb that goes like, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So I think that's a great way to kind of look at that too with uh, the yin and the yang, right? So there's always pros and cons to each 
um, side of the yin and the yang. So it's also about knowing when to focus on each, depending on the situation you're in in your business right now. But from my experiences, um, usually it is going to be like the other side of the yin and the yang that's been ignored or hasn't been worked on as much that's going to bring about like the next states of growth and success in your business. So hope that was interesting, insightful, valuable, and I encourage you to use this uh, yin and yang thought exercise on a regular basis in your business to create more ha- harmony and, and find ways to balance your business out, which will lead to more success and results in your business without a question. So that's it for me today. Bye for now.